everyone! In today's video, I'm comparing these two camera bodies for photography at a real world portrait photo shoot. So, I have the Sony a7 IV with the GM 35mm f1.4 versus the Lumix S5 II with the 35mm f1.8. Today we're going to be comparing the photography features of these two camera bodies, but let me know if you want to see another video comparing the video features. So, let's get started. I am finally back with some Lumix content on my channel, which I'm so excited for. I've done so many portrait photo shoots on the S5 II this year and just haven't had any time to edit the videos, but now I'm chaining myself to my desk so I can get this mountain of video editing done. So I have heaps of new videos coming soon. Get ready. <laughs> I feel like it'd be cool if you could stand just like here on the edge of the okay. footpath. It's so dark here. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like with yeah. this one, it'd be cool to get a little bit of motion in yeah. the skirt. Ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm starting on the Lumix S5 II with the S35 mm f1.8 lens, and I'm capturing full body shots because I really love that foresty looking background. So I want to try and get as much of that location as possible in my frame. Both cameras produce extremely similar looking images. When I couldn't see the file name and I was flicking between all the images, I honestly couldn't tell which photo was taken on which camera. One of the main differences we have between the a7 IV and the S5 II though is the megapixel count. The a7 IV produces 33 megapixel files and the S5 II produces 24 megapixel files. This might not seem like a huge difference in size, but in practice, I do like having that extra wiggle room when it comes to cropping on the a7 IV. The megapixel difference between my previous camera, which was the a7 III with a 24 megapixel sensor, is one of the reasons I upgraded to the a7 IV. In saying that, I have done wedding photography on cameras as low as 21 megapixels for many, many years, and it wasn't really an issue either. You might have noticed I am using ISO 500 on both cameras. I find that the Lumix files are actually cleaner than the a7 IV files. You can see a bit more texture on the Sony images. The photos straight out of camera from both cameras look great in my opinion. We have a good amount of dynamic range and colors and skin tones look great. I think it'd be cool if you wanted to crouch here. Yeah. <laughs> is anyone else sweating or is it just me? Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> Now let's talk about ergonomics. The Sony a7 IV weighs 659 grams and the S5 II weighs 740 grams. So they are both fairly light full frame camera bodies, making them good options for traveling and long days of shooting. They both have a flip screen and great video features. They also each have dual card slots, which means you can use them in a professional setting. The a7 IV does have a multi card slot, which also takes a CF Express type A card if you want a never ending buffer. And yes, I have I've actually tried this and it's in my a7 IV review video if you want to see this in action. The viewfinders are also about the same and while the S5 II LCD screen is better on paper, when I'm actually using both cameras out in the field, I don't notice any difference between the screens. They seem about the same to me. More importantly, let's talk about FPS. In the style I take photos, which is in uncompressed RAW, the a7 IV shoots up to 6 frames per second versus the S5 II which goes up to 7 FPS. Honestly, in practice, there's not much difference. The a7 IV can shoot up to 10 FPS in compressed RAW, which is the maximum FPS it can reach, while the S5 II has the ability to shoot in up to 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode. However, you will probably experience some rolling shutter if you're trying to capture high speed seen in this mode. Something the a7 IV is missing is that in the S5 II you have the ability to use high resolution mode which is called pixel shift in Sony. I also really love the drive mode dial on the S5 II which lets you select between shooting speeds, interval shooting, self timer, etc. Both these features are reserved for Sony's higher end cameras like the A1, A9 and A7R series. The a7 IV does have an extra dial on the right hand side though which I use a lot. Finally, we also have lens options, but we'll get to that right after checking out autofocus. There was a nice patch of sun that just hit my face as I was walking. Oh yeah, can you swap spots with me? Yeah, do you want to jump in? Yeah. That's perfect there. So it's time to talk about the big topic and what I find is probably the biggest difference between both cameras, which is autofocus. 
The reason we can start comparing a camera like the Lumix S5 II to the Sony a7 IV is because Lumix finally introduced phase hybrid AF with the S5 II, which is the same autofocus technology that most mirrorless camera manufacturers are using nowadays, including Sony. A quick way to sum up my experiences is that both cameras do a fantastic job at autofocus, but the Sony autofocus system is simply more mature. This means that at the moment, I personally find my a7 IV's autofocus to be faster, more accurate, and more reliable, but let's get into detail. I find that both cameras do a great job at focusing on further away subjects. The S5 II has absolutely no problems keeping up when someone is moving or walking around. Dan and I were stress testing this at the beach the other day where we both took turns just running around and moving as much as we could and the camera had no problems keeping up with focus. I have also tested this many times on my a7 IV and it handles those situations the same way. As you get closer to your subject is where I start seeing the a7 IV pull ahead in terms of autofocus performance. Where I find the a7 IV is stronger is when it comes to finer focusing with portraits, such as getting focus on someone's eye or iris quickly in a close-up portrait scenario. While the S5 II can also capture clear, sharp images on someone's iris in this setting, I find that it misses a little bit more often or it can take a little longer to get focus while you're taking photos, which can sometimes cause a loss of flow during the photo shoot. In saying that, it's exciting the S5 II is at the level it's already at because this is Panasonic's first phase hybrid AF camera body, so it'll be interesting to see where they go from here. Hi. There's a cool rock! Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like here it'd be cool if you had your feet like down and both your knees up. Yeah, that's really cool there. Yeah. This next point has more to do with lenses. The S5 II has exclusive L-mount lenses from Lumix and Leica, but even though there is a good range of lenses to choose from, there are less options than what is available for the a7 IV. Both the S5 II and a7 IV share lens options from Sigma, but the a7 IV also has exclusive lens options from Tamron, Samyang, and Sony. So at the time of making this video, Sony is ahead in terms of the sheer amount of autofocus lens options that are available to choose from for their camera bodies. Both cameras are great options when it comes to doing portrait photography. They are so, so similar to each other with relatively small things setting them apart that are personal to the way you do photography. While I find the a7 IV is stronger when it comes to its autofocus capabilities, the Lumix S5 II is not that far behind and is extremely good value for money. Let me know what you think in the comments, but that is all I have for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.